to process that if you are using Revit, if you're using BIM, every single design team should be doing this. I've got a lot of my architect friends out there. You are actually the ones who need to hear this more than anything. Right. But keeping, even if you draft everything, you should still keep the model on in the view. Exactly. materials question sure uh, or brainstorm i needed some help brainstorming it are okay. you familiar with uh three form yes material i oh, am yeah. trying to figure out how to create that material so it has some translucency to it um when i take it into enscape and mm. render it that way so you're talking like uh like the decorative glass type of stuff or something like that yes you know, yeah so it needs transparency like glass but i needed mm -hmm. to be able to insert an image and i every time i put an image in there like i can't have the image okay so for this one and usually honestly when it comes to a lot of these custom materials that's kind of where i start is i find something that uh is similar enough and then try and tweak it from there i know the rules have changed a little bit with enscape and the fact that they have their own material editor the fact that revit now has physically based materials but the truth is all the old material stuff still works in Enscape, you know so so mm -hmm. it's potential that you don't have to use the new material editor at all um, and it still works and looks fine so that's what we're going to try today mm -hmm. so uh, i'm going to uh, uh here we go yeah, i think i think now. i did glass block because that one had image mm -hmm. available or the standard glass doesn't right this one, I'm going to use the wired glass, which is the same idea. So this is wired, you know, safety glass, whatever it is. I'm going to mm -hmm. replace this asset. <clears throat> and so here um, you could see the image. It's not a bump. It's not a um, it's not a, uh, a cutout. It's just the image here um, is what creates it. And so if I replace this now, three form. Oh, look at all that three form, huh? <clears throat> OK, so let's do three form. We're going to say this, of course, it's not repetitive. Why would it be seamless? That's okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to say that's maybe six inches by six inches. Sure. So we'll make it six inches by six inches. So I just assigned this to the image for transparency, right? Okay, and then, it's the same JPEG. Yep, same JPEG. And then I'll leave it 100% for now, and then we could mess with it. But uh, so I'm going to And you made them the same, same, same size. size and stuff? Yep. yep. Now, if I go into Enscape, it's like so. There man. we go. We're getting there. So I think that's your. Okay. I think that's your approach to mess with that. Um, obviously, all right. This is yeah, the I, material, I did not. I did not do that. I don't even know if I need to do the image. I don't even know if I need to do the image up there. I'm gonna actually try mm -hmm. right now. I'm gonna s switch this with one of the colored three forms just for fun. But that's, yeah. that's you, that was the trick that you need. There is the uh, the image, the transparency image so it's like it's basically a transparency map is what you can think of it as okay and you have no no cutout going no cut out. No, no. it's you, if you look you can see the reflection i don't have it turned up all the way but we can probably crank up the reflection too how do you make the image repeatable oh yeah you got to get a repeatable image <laughs> oh okay mm -hmm. so these, these yeah. are not seamless when textures I, or, or yeah. you have to make it um these are not seamless textures i'm using right now it uh, looks like you do have to do both. So I, I was curious to see if I had to do both. Um, well, three, yeah, Paul, three, four, it, three form only comes four by eight. So it's like I just scale it. You just scale it. Yeah, yeah, Scale the image to that size. So as long, yeah. And a couple sizes. That's, you're definitely going to need, uh, you know, repeatable images um, or, or seamless. Yeah, if you were trying to do like. I probably mm -hmm. have some, I have some that I could pull up, but let me just, uh, I want to see what this orange. So notice I had to, I had to have it on both for the uh, image oops, and for the transparency. I was just trying to see if I could do it on one and the, not the other. Oh, stupid Revit, one six. Why do you have to type inches in this one dialogue, but nowhere else? Yeah, so dumb. the one spot. So dumb. Um, I don't know what I did with the scale. Hold on. Same thing here. One foot six inches. <laughs> there we go. Notice it is reflecting, right? So so you mm -hmm. can you can 
and the reflectivity is here, right? So you can you can play with that. You can make it super reflective. And honestly, you know, I know some of these are also like stippled, and you could probably throw a bump on it and see some of that too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you wanted, if for some reason it was like a stippled one, um, you know, you could throw a bump map on it and do like a sand or uh, I'll just do some random random concrete one like this. And to make to make the bump, you're just making the the image black and white and the um, dot. Yeah, being but but what I'm saying is for file. that, what I'm thinking the bump yeah. is actually just putting a a relief on it. Detection. So if anything, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if anything, if you want it, if it was like a stippled pattern, you might find like a sand, a black and white sand texture. You can even just make like a a Photoshop one. But you can see this is actually kind of doing it if you mm -hmm. look closely. Um, but, yeah. Because you can you can specify the texture right, that right, you put on it. Right. I mean I could I could crank crank the bump up, but you know, I'm just trying to show some examples of what you could do with it now. <clears throat> the, there it is. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> the color you have it as blue right now. Yeah, I don't think it matters. I that was, that was something I kept going around about. I think it was my jip finishes I was struggling mm -hmm. with. Like what does that color do? Like, it seems like it's behind and you never see it. If you have images, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Covers over yeah. if you have images. The image fade, though, is where it comes into play on gla on anything, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you fade what you the can image enough, it'll. You, you come can through. blend it. You can blend it with other stuff. I don't know. On glass, it may be a little different, but uh, on like chip, there you go. Yeah. So it'll come through. So it almost acts like a okay. tent there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's I kept, pretty cool. I kept like, uh, I had a, a wall, a jip wall, and I put the paint color in that spot, and then it just kept being white walls, and I was like, what <laughs> What am I doing? <laughs> yes, yes. Start going uh, in circles. In and it's the, separate the from, like, tint. Tower. It's separate from, like, tint if you're using I mean, there's a lot of different things, you know, going on there. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, so that, that's how I would do it. That's how I did it 10 years ago, and apparently that still works today. So I... Uh, what I what I really wanted to test instead of just, just sort of uh, showing you the tutorial was I wanted to test to make sure it still works in Enscape.